Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be taking an iPhone 10 with a destroyed back, damaged and detached display, and restored back to mint condition using a fully custom transparent housing. But before we dive into the repair, I'd like to thank iFixit for sponsoring this video and providing me with the tools and replacement screen for this video. Get parts, tools and guides at ifixit.com slash Hugh Jeffries or at the link below. Coming back to the iPhone 10, this is trying to be a Galaxy Fold with its fold out display as the glue isn't actually holding in the OLED panel anymore. And speaking of the OLED panel, it is actually damaged, however the glass on top isn't which is a little bit strange. This is clearly an aftermarket panel given its strangely thick bezels at the bottom of the display compared to an original or high quality aftermarket screen. Now I purchased this iPhone 10 64 gig from eBay for a total cost of 358 Australian dollars, which seems to be a reasonable price for one of these, especially in rough condition as this one is. I could take it out of the box and all that was in there was the phone. Unfortunately, I didn't get any charges or cables with it, which seems to be the go with just about every phone I purchase. I actually was told that this screen was original, but I can clearly tell it's not as the corners of this screen are oddly shaped. It is a 64 gig unit, however, on iOS 12.4.1. Along with that, I also purchased this custom housing for a total cost of 175 Australian dollars, which is certainly a very, very expensive housing. But unlike every other housing, online this one is fully see-through which I believe will look absolutely fantastic on this iPhone 10. However this install wasn't without some flaws which I'll get to a little bit later on as well as the guy I actually purchased this off from eBay. However it's time to start the repair. So to begin I'll need to remove the two pentalobe screws from the bottom of the iPhone 10 and luckily the frame is actually separated, so there's no prying whatsoever. It just opens right up. For this repair, you're gonna need a bunch of different screwdrivers. Uh, the ones I'm removing from a lot of these cover plates are actually tri-wing pieces, which aren't too common, and you need a toolkit like an iFixit Protect toolkit, which has all of the bits you're going to need for pretty much any repair, and it's what I've been using for the past two or three years now. With the battery disconnected, I can begin work by actually opening up the uh, frame which has been left behind from the old screen. I'll need to detach the earpiece speaker cable from that as well because I'll need to reuse that when I attach the new screen onto the phone. It's time to start removing everything as this whole housing needs to be completely gutted before it can be transferred across into the new housing. This is a big job as the new housing contains no parts whatsoever. Even the smallest little metal grills for the speaker and microphone need to be moved across. With all of the flex cables loose and the camera removed, I can start unscrewing the three screws holding in the logic board, making sure to remove the SIM card first, and it comes right out of the phone. Next, I can move along to the dock connector, which all of this needs to be unscrewed and removed as well, of course. And for some strange reason, Apple's used a variety of different screwdriver bits for the dock connector portion of the phone. There's tri-wing, Phillips, and there's also a couple of standoff screws, so you're gonna be constantly changing in between different bits so you can remove all of the screws. So you wanna keep those screws organized on something like a magnetic mat from iFixit, so when it comes time to reassemble everything, the right screw ends up in the right hole. All right, so next I can move across to the battery and I'll need to remove the adhesive strips, which are quite difficult to remove. And I was actually thinking to myself that I was snapping these off. However, they're much shorter than previous generations of iPhone and they're actually not too bad to remove once you've actually cleared some space out by removing portions of the dock connector. I actually found these battery adhesive strips easier to remove than the ones on the Sony Xperia X, which I'm about to fix up in a future video. After the battery is removed, that'll give us access to the Face ID sensor, and I'll need to carefully remove it from the phone, making sure not to rip any of those flex cables, as that is a paired component to the phone, which only Apple can pair, so if that becomes damaged in any way, Face ID unlock will no longer function on the phone. Moving back to the bottom of the phone, I can remove the dock connector and antenna which still remain in the frame. It's a good idea to apply some heat to these cables so they come up a bit easier and considering this is going in a transparent housing, I want to try and keep these cables as neat and flat looking as they possibly can so when everything's reassembled in the new clear housing, 
everything looks nice and factory. Of course, you could install all new components, so everything would actually be brand new. However, I wanted to make sure everything was original and to keep costs low as this was already getting quite expensive, I opted to reuse the parts inside of this housing. With the bottom antenna removed, I can move back to the top of the phone and remove a secondary antenna cable. I believe this one is for the Wi-Fi, but I'm not exactly sure on that, but it has a lot of screws and little clips that need to be removed uh, and make sure to put those back in their correct spots when you reassemble the device, of course. I'll then need to loosen and remove the volume and mute switch cable from the housing itself. You can see there's also this sensor piece down the bottom, not quite sure what that's uh, doing, but it's on this same line, so that'll need to be removed with some heat. I'll also apply plenty of heat to the wireless charging coil, which for some reason is attached to the volume flex cable, um, and if you damage the wireless charging coil, you'd need to replace both components. I did actually opt to buy a new wireless charging coil because I knew that I could damage it getting it up, and a new one would just look better with a clear housing. However, it didn't come with the cable attached to it, so I wasn't able to use it in the end, and I had to reuse this one, so I made sure not to break it when I removed it from the housing. I did get it out in one piece, however, it isn't exactly perfect and brand new looking, um, so I did my best to try and flatten out and clean it up as best I could. There's a number of other little small brackets and little wires that go in between different pieces of this phone which I'll need to transfer across, as well as these brackets on the sides of the phone which actually hold down the display panel to the frame itself. Moving down to an even smaller level of this phone, I'll need to remove the clips and brackets from the volume and power buttons because that is actually what's retaining them in the frame itself. Taking a look at the new housing, you can see there is a number of fingerprints in between the glass and metal frame, which have been left behind when the guy has actually um, done his job in laser cutting everything out. So that's a little bit of a shame. However, I did try and clean it up as best I could. I still think that's a little bit slack though for housing that almost cost me 200 Australian dollars. But moving along, it's time to reinstall everything into this new frame. I'm going to start with the volume buttons as they're one of the smallest components that will need to be installed. So I can install their brackets and little retaining spring. Next, I can actually transfer across these little gold pads which I believe have something to do with the face ID sensor, probably some sort of way of grounding it to the metal frame of the phone. I'm going to actually install a new power button. Uh, no reason to this really, other than uh, it's got a fresh bit of adhesive on it, and I think it will just sit down nicely into the new frame. So screwing that back together, I can start to install the side brackets, which I removed from the old frame. And this whole process is basically just in reverse of what we just did. If I had to compare this iPhone 10 with some of the other iPhones Apple's made in the past, in terms of repairability, everything seems to be easily enough and modular enough that it can be repaired, excluding the Face ID, of course, because that's paired to each iPhone, just like the home button was on the iPhone 8 and below. Now, I'd like to just point out that I did remove a lot of the adhesive from various components of this phone, including some of the antennas and the dock connector. The reason for this was it was just gonna look better in the housing as it's completely see-through. Now, because these were removed off of the old frame, the adhesive was sort of torn and it wasn't sort of 100% uh, perfect, so it wouldn't have looked as good in the frame. I also forgot to remove the little metal grills and speaker uh, routing pieces of plastic from the old frame, um, which were actually very difficult to remove because of all of the water resistant seals and things um, that are actually keeping them in place. So it took a little bit of work to get those out, but once they're installed in the new frame, of course, everything screws back together. I'd like to mention if you do this, obviously your phone isn't going to be water resistant like it was from the factory, as I haven't been able to source out any of the gaskets that go around the dock connector or the speaker vents. With that being said, this phone's obviously more of a showpiece than it is something that you wanna be taking underwater. Now, while I was installing all of these components, I was constantly going back with my microfiber cloth, making sure to polish up the glass and make sure there's no dust, dirt, 
or any kind of fingerprints or anything left behind because that would just look really bad if I sealed up the device only to find a heap of dirt and fingerprints on the inside of the phone, which just wouldn't look as good. So I made sure everything was just about perfect um, before I assembled in the pieces. I also had to transfer across the little plastic piece that goes in the SIM tray um, that actually just helps the tray eject. And then I can install the wireless charging coil and volume button cable uh, and screw it back into place. Actually it took a little bit to line up the mute switch as it was a lot different of a design than previously seen in some of the older iPhone models. With everything screwed in, I'm going to align and press down the old wireless charging coil back into the phone. And you can see the phone is now starting to take shape and we're almost done uh, with the housing of the phone. Next, I went to install the new flash and microphone into the camera lens. Um, and I was having a little bit of trouble with this as it just wasn't staying in place and um, I couldn't quite get it lined up. So I decided to do this a little bit off camera and the camera lens fell out of the housing. So I jumped on Twitter and informed you guys of my behind the scenes issue I had run into. Now I didn't mention where or who I'd gotten the housing from, but I did inform him only to be blocked shortly after. And from what other people had sent me, he'd blamed me for not testing the housing after having it for almost one month, and that therefore I am a low quality customer that he must block. A bit strange, but anyway, I was able to glue the camera lens back in with some adhesive. However, I will come back at a later date with something much more strong um, to actually hold that in place. So um, it is together, but I wouldn't say it is up to my standard. So I will come back um, off camera and fix that up later on. But it's such a small little issue. Uh, you took very seriously and uh, didn't really want anything to do with me after it. So anyway, I won't be getting any more housings from that guy. But luckily it was something that I can fix and not like the entire frame fell apart. Something I should mention is that the glass panel on the back isn't actually glued to the metal frame like it originally was. So if you want to drop this iPhone 10, it's likely to shatter everywhere and the glass will actually fall out of the back. As originally the glass panel is glued to the metal frame, so when it cracks it doesn't sort of shatter into a million pieces. With that in mind, I can install the logic board back into the frame itself and work on the camera, making sure it's lined up properly and installing its appropriate bracket and screws. Next, I can move along and connect all of the flex cables. There is absolutely a lot of these on the iPhone 10 compared to older generations, um, but I also missed this little bracket which uh, holds in the display, so I just had to grab that off the old housing and put that back in place. With the housing prepped and ready to go, it's time to crack out my iFixit replacement display, which I'm going to be installing on this phone. So opening it up, there's not much you need to do in terms of preparation for the iPhone 10 screens, other than to transfer across the earpiece, which is actually really simple to do on this phone. Three screws and everything is pretty much ready to go. Now as this display is a replacement, it won't have Apple's true tone function. And as I didn't have the original screen, I didn't have the data to copy across. But I have had some luck using 3U tools and a JC Pro 1000S to retrieve this data and repair True Tone. So I assembled the phone, one to test it out, but two also to uh, prepare the display for a reprogram. As you can see in settings, there is no True Tone option as the screen is a replacement and the setting has suddenly disappeared. So I connected it up to a PC and opened up 3U tools only to find that it can't find the screen serial number. However, I could find something called the cover board number, which is also something that needs to be programmed onto the screen. So I decided just to try that one and see if that would work uh, with the true tone. However, I wasn't able to program the screen. I'm not quite sure why this was. However, uh, it just kept defaulting back to what it was programmed from, which is just the letter X, given it's an iPhone 10 screen. Moving along to the battery though, I didn't want to install the original Apple adhesive strips because if they snap, I have no way of removing the battery because prying up the battery would obviously crack the glass as there's no metal which is sort of supporting uh, the back of the battery. So I used some double sided adhesive which probably isn't the best choice and I will come in here and replace that when I find something better. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know down below. Next, I can go ahead and install the water resistant seal, which goes in between the frame and the display. This is really important for a transparent housing, of course, because you don't want any dust entering underneath the screen 
uh, and getting in between any of the components as a dirty inside to one of these transparent housings would just look really bad over time uh, if dust was allowed inside the device. Next, I can get the iFixit display, remove its protective film and connect it up to the iPhone X. With its connections seated in place, I can also connect up the battery and install the big bracket that goes over all of the flex cables on the logic board. Finally, I can begin removing the plastic film which is covering up the adhesive on the perimeters of the phone. And once all of that has been removed, it's time to seat the display back onto the phone. When you do this, make sure that the cable for the screen doesn't get caught in between the screen and the frame. Once you're all good there, you can press it down and install the bottom pentalobe screws back into the phone. I can then remove the plastic film on the top of the screen and we're done. So this is it, a custom transparent iPhone 10 that we made using a completely destroyed iPhone 10 with a shattered back a loose display that was also faulty, and we transformed it into something unique and one of a kind. Unfortunately, I won't ever be able to buy one of these housings from this guy because he blocked me over the smallest little issue, which probably isn't a very good business model to go by. However, this phone turned out fantastic. I will have to fix up that camera lens later on, so don't worry too much about how that looks. This is definitely a phone that will stun people for years to come. It looks spectacular alongside my transparent Galaxy S8 and iPhone 4S to go in my collection of transparent devices. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the custom and modded tech playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.